Any second now. now. There we go. Now we're live. Now okay. we're live. Uh, so I'm going to have Jonathan in the dark do our opening song yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm in the dark. Jonathan but I'm in the dark. Here. Jonathan yeah. in the dark. Jonathan in the dark. Here we go. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> it we, was got little Jake, we got it was a little Jake Allen commentary there during. <laughs> yeah, because I could freaking hear the strings going out of tune My as I played. I was like, oh, out of tune strings. I spent 15 minutes tuning this thing. It sounded so good. It, it sounded if, good. If you, it did sound kids, good. If you get bit You're by fine. the 12 string bug, you have my sympathy. <laughs> Ooh. We, anyway. We, we never would have known if you hadn't said anything. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> We have uh, we have an interesting show tonight, uh, uh, musical uh, show. Unfortunately, the first person we're going to bring up, uh, her voice is going out. Uh, she she shredded it during a performance, which hey, you know we've all been there, we've all done it. And even Renee has kind of lost some of her voice tonight. Oh yeah, yeah, I am totally there. So I'm just trying to bring it down a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of singing. You know, when you sing and you perform all the time and you keep going, you know, it, it gets Understood. it stresses you out. But I got some water here on my nice uh, Tartan Media Network mug here. She says I got water. She says it. <laughs> it is water. A it is water. Plug. Shameful plug. What network are we on? Gee, I can't remember. TMN. I, I hope you got We're uh, going TMN. Uh, warm tea and honey in there. Yeah, warm, warm tea and warm honey. Tea and honey. Good for your throat. Yeah, warm, Where's yeah, the shot of good. bourbon to go in it? <laughs> that's not good for the throat. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, fine. Maybe good for the soul, but not good for the throat. Uh, so exactly. We've got, yeah. we've got coming up later, we've got Daniel Gay coming on the show. He's a friend of ours from way yeah. back. Yes, I love Daniel started. Gay. I love yeah. Daniel Gay. So oh, my God. And we're going to bring up uh, Mickey Sharp right now. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Yes. Yay! Hi. Yay. There she is. <laughs> now, do you prefer to be called Mackenzie or Mickey? Mickey. Mickey. Okay. Mickey. Very good. Uh, I just want to make sure. Uh, I noticed sometimes you would you yeah. would type in Mackenzie to me, or or some of your stuff would have Mackenzie on it. Uh, but right, most yeah. most of your friends like, call you know, Mickey. Mm -hmm. Most of your friends call you Mickey. So, and I'm uh, I am resisting singing the song. I will not sing the song. I promise <laughs> okay. that you're so fine. I do. I hear it in my head, though. I'm just gonna say I do hear it in my head. <sighs> you get that all the it. time. Yeah, I it's, it's it, fun. Of course, Renee. And I love your shirt. Walk away, Renee. Yeah, and I, I'm gonna say I love. I love the shirt that you're wearing. Thank SDF, you. SDF, SDF. I got one of those. I got the one of those. sister <laughs> network to KMH, where we are now, and another sister of TMN. We are all together. I love this. Yes. This is great. <laughs> so, so I gotta ask this question. It's it's part of the deal. Uh, where did it all begin? Where did the music begin for you? Um. Well, I think like what I've always brought it back to like the main moment in life, right? I was like nine years old watching Fuse and MTV and I saw the My Chemical Romance music video for Helena and I was like, this is it. <laughs> music is it, especially like theatrical, which it makes a lot of sense for the band that I'm in now. Mm -hmm. um, but that was it forever. I mean, I was nine years old then and then I kept getting older and I was too afraid to do anything. So technically it all started with Socially Distant Fest. 
Okay. I had never wow. performed in public. Had never performed in Holy public. Cow. My really? own mother, my own mom had never heard me sing. And That's I like crazy. Yeah. I can't believe that. I cannot believe that. I am like <laughs> freaking out right now. I'm gobsmacked because you're such the consummate professional. You're so natural. Yes. How did you overcome like jitters and stuff? Like, did you not have any stage fright? Um, That's a great question. I, I thank you. It's it, it's baffling to me even because it was mortifying in my head. Um, but I think I just like was. I had done so many like um, live streams that I was at least somewhat used to singing in front of people, in my head anyway. So the first time I got on stage, I, I was, it was like that. Like it was like I had been doing it forever, so. Wow, that's a yeah. first. That's the first wow. time I've ever heard somebody say they got over stage fright by doing like social media. Yeah. I did that. That's crazy. That's incredible. It's, it's, it's possible, yeah. You're, how do you feel differently about yourself now knowing that this is like a new persona, right? You're you're basically reinventing yourself and what's possible for you. You're forging ahead. I mean, how does that make you feel about yourself? What has that taught you about Mickey? Um, it's, it's definitely made me conquer most fears at this point. Anytime I'm slightly uncomfortable about something, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> like... I just have to embrace that terrified moment and be like, once I step over this, over this, I'm going to be good. So I, it's made me like completely um, approach everything completely differently. Now, I, I, you do like visual performers. I mean, I, I saw on your web page when I was looking for stuff to, to, to ask you about, I saw Amy Winehouse. I saw Lady Gaga. There's a lot of references to the visual performers that, you know, kind of do rock and roll. Um, any others? What are some of the other ones you can tell us? Um, pretty much in that same vein, you know, like David Bowie. Yeah. Um, uh, and then even like a lot of musical theater, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, wow. Oh, yeah. Course, I know, saw Michael mention of Rocky, Rocky Horror Picture, Picture Show too. and... Um, the sequel, Shock Treatment. You had mentioned you love the, uh, yeah. the theme song for Shock Treatment. Mm -hmm. I do. Unashamedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't help it. It's something about it. It's almost better than all the other songs to me. Like, every time I listen to it. <laughs> Mickey, who first uh, steered you toward SDF? How'd you first find out about it? That's that. That's something that I still can't figure out. I I can't remember. Wow. <laughs> I, I I think about it all the time. Like I just landed there somehow. <laughs> I have no idea. And I, we're it was super destiny. glad that you did. I have to go back in the annals of time. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I keep thinking, like, who do I need to thank? <laughs> I, I, I know now. Have... Go ahead. Sandy is saying to tell you them about how you used to go live with Keith Cuts. Oh, of course, I was the ask painter about that too, who did all the painting. Vicky, you were the inspiration behind. Jake face. Tell us a little bit about that and how you go live with Keith. Um, okay, so I before I even became a performer on S Uh oh. Oh, oh. We lost, lost your audio. audio. We lost your audio, Mickey. Oh dear. Come back oh, to there us. She is. Come back. We miss you. Okay. Sorry. Okay. There, there she is. There she yeah, is. We got you. Coming back. We're good. Okay. Right. Hold on mm -hmm. one second, guys. Sounds a lot better too. Yeah, I think that my uh, my boyfriend's phone just connected to my AirPods for some reason. <laughs> oh boy, my AirPods always All give right. me trouble. That's why I'm not wearing. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> my I, my boyfriend's phone got a call and then it instantly connected to my. Oh for some my gosh. <laughs> I was Blue like, oh, I got it. That's not good. Jake Allen just so, mentioned that he loves look. your shirt. Yeah, Jake Thank Allen you. says he loves your shirt. And then someone says to ask you about Twin Peaks and also the Dylan tattoo. Okay. Um, <laughs> where do we... Okay, the Keith, the Keith thing. So Keith I, I, whenever Pace. I first started watching um, SDF, he was definitely one of the people that I became friends with instantly. And um, he lives in Atlanta. So we were like, let's hang out. And the first time I ever went live on SDF, it was with him. So that was kind of like wow. breaking through for me. Like 
all right, I can do this live streaming thing. And then I started doing it privately and here we are. Well, that, that helps with it because Keith is like really at ease in front of the camera. He's in front of the camera all the time. He's yes. like, he'll do like exactly. four hours, three. So that, that's cool. Yeah. That, that always helps if you can, if you can do that. That's iconic, by the way, having both of you guys on screen. Yeah, so he and I was I was definitely pretty low key mortified the first time that I did <laughs> stream with him, and I was wearing this really hot onesie, so I was like drenched in sweat by the end of it. Oh that is so but, funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Now you have some of his art behind you, right? Um, so the, the, the Biggie Smalls one is his and the other two are ones that I've done, but they're very similar to his style, oh. I suppose. <laughs> ah, you're an artist as well. I like the, I, uh, know, Puff Marshmallow Man back there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> How did you get interested in painting? Rory's a painter as well. So, oh. you know, you guys have that in common. So I'm not a visual artist. I just wish I could be. I'm envious. Like, I wish I could oh, do boy, that. I are. wish I could just do you Stay are. Puffed. Uh, but how did you do that? How did you do that? What's your process? Um, that's something that I've been doing much longer than anything else, really. I've just I've always been a visual artist before. Wow. I um I have like a five minutes. This is a long, much longer story. I don't know if we even have time for it. But I had like a short internet five minutes of fame because I painted some dresses for Foster the People, and those kind of blew up wow. online. So I've I've wow. I'm, I was always more comfortable. Holy because cow. I was so scared to be on stage and singing mm -hmm. that I would be yeah. like, well, I can do this though. <laughs> um, but you know, I don't do it as much nowadays. I, that was before I find it a little hot. Go ahead, Roy. Mm -hmm. If you were no, to go say ahead. something. No, no, okay. go ahead. So you mentioned, you know, being like, oh, just eat up in stage fright and stuff. Yet we see, you know, pictures and videos of you performing on stage and you just command the stage in whatever you do where did you get where did you get that on stage persona from who did you observe and say to yourself i could do this more than anything i think lady gaga is where i kind of have focused mm -hmm. my inspiration yeah. mostly and i've spent i've spent probably a, a million hours in front of the mirror singing and performing. So I was like, if I just do that, <laughs> it'll be good. Holy cow. <laughs> Getting those moves down. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the Valley Ghouls. Um, okay, so uh, our bassist's name is Katie and I met her randomly one evening and she does hair. And she was like, you need to make an appointment to come get your hair done. And I and I was like, yes, of course. So we did that. And every time I would go to get my hair done, she would be like, you need to sing with my band. They were all instrumental before I joined. Um, so wow. I was like, I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, can't do it. Mm -mm. And she was like, just try. Just come to practice. I, I kind of joke and say she tricked me into joining the band but I'm very grateful for it and so it just kind of happens organically and almost on accident but they are my favorite local bands and I'm very grateful to get to sing with them because it's like the it's like nothing I've ever seen before wow and look at the logo here that we got up here that <laughs> I remember yeah. that I used to get uh like I don't know if they were decals that you could actually iron on t-shirts or maybe they were big stickers, but they had these kind of character faces on them, but they were driving like hot rods. I remember. <laughs> um, I think that's actually what it was his inspiration for the style of uh, yeah. that he like wow. went for with it. Yeah. So, but that is great. <laughs> that is awesome. And I've seen video of you doing, uh, doing with the Valley Ghouls, uh, performing and, uh, that's awesome. Uh, I also am a singer who cannot play guitar or piano or any other things, uh, but but I like to sing. I love to sing. So, um, you know, I'm out yeah. there doing what I can. You're awesome. lucky. You've got a band that said, hey, come sing with us. <laughs> oh, I know. And I'm I'm super grateful for that because I, 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 there's, I actually have a solo show coming up this weekend and it will be my first time doing that on my own. And so I'm like, wow. 
why can't someone just play for me? <laughs> <laughs> and again, when you're up on that stage, you own it. Uh, yes, you, you do. Own it. It's, it shows well, that you practice you, in front of the mirror. Who's on your There's playlist like, like right now? Like who, which bands or whatever would we see on your playlist? Um, I've mostly been listening to a lot of instrumental rockabilly really? and surf rock solely because of the Valley Goals, oh. just so that I can learn more about that. Um, Interesting. I'm like, I'm so out of the loop when it comes to new music right now, which is very weird for me. <laughs> Usually yeah. I know everything that's going on, but I've just been so focused on, on honing in my craft that I don't even mm -hmm. know that. I listen to more podcasts than music, to be honest with you. Same. Mickey, yeah. where in this wide world of ours were you born? Where did this all begin? I was born in a small town in Indiana called Washington. Washington, Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> so what was it? So take us back to there growing up in Indiana. Well, first of all, how long were you in Indiana for? Um, for six years. So it was very short, but I remember it well. <laughs> and you go from Washington, Indiana to where? I'm in Jacksonville, Florida now. So you've been there ever since you were six years old. Yep. Well, wow. I moved I moved to Arizona briefly, but you know, that was less than a year or so. So as a kid, uh what kinds of uh music did you sort of gravitate to? Was it the was it the traditional, you know, just rock and stuff like that? Or was it like regional bass? Were you more into country or folk or something like that? Um so music's definitely always been um, a major part of my life. I mean, like, I, I my first love, I think, was Fleetwood Mac. Um, oh. And, like, just going for drives in the country with my family. And they'd have, like, cassettes they would put on. And Fleetwood Mac, I remember much. My grandmother listened to, like, doo-wop. And so the Diana oh. Ross and the Supremes. I was kind of all over the place. And my dad was, like, really into Slayer and Primus. <laughs> So, wow. like all over the place. Wow. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was a lot all at once. You have the most eclectic musical upbringing of anyone I've ever I've ever known. Yeah, I love that. It's, and it's <laughs> and it's it's definitely projected itself onto my personality today because I'm the I'm I'm that that's me in a nutshell. Like I can talk about many almost any band really. Uh, I noticed again. You're you were friends with some of our friends like Keith Cuts and Ivan Basil. Uh, you mm -hmm. seem to be a, a fan of the. Uh, you were actually on uh, Empire of Excellence, right? Correct. As a guest. Yeah. Oh, as a, yeah. As a, as, a, as, a, as a character, actually, as like uh, uh, one of the one of the staple characters in the in the in the show. Which that's you know that made me feel good. I loved it. I love that show. I was like, I get don't, to be a don't say it's a character. It's real. She's real to me. Real. <laughs> I'm loving the Tell us about I'm the character the you most identify with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's what yeah, it, it's it's real. <laughs> what was the inspiration between behind the Oracle? I mean, how did all and, and you collaborating with Ivan and all of that? How how did that all come about? Sure. So um, Ivan um, basically came up with the premise for the show before I really even knew that much about it. He, he wanted to have a meeting with me and he pitched the idea to me. The Oracle was completely his doing. Um, this is like the, this is the idea for the character and this is what her name is going to be. And then he gave me all the creative um like ability to do whatever i wanted to with it so i came up with the look of course inspired by, by elvira um the wow. way that i decided to style my hair and whatnot and so um i i wrote this the scripts and the, the oracle readings on my on myself i learned a lot about horoscopes that's for sure <laughs> It's so convincing. I thought it was based around you. I thought you brought that character. It's so realistic. No. You embody it so perfectly. That this is blowing my mind right now. You're. I mean, so are you? Are you an actress? Do you consider yourself an actor? Is that something you want to go into? Because um, I never really considered myself to be one. However, um, I've come to find that it might be a big part of my whole persona as a performer because when I am on stage with the Valley Ghouls, I am in fact acting. 
I mean, right. I've come up with this, like, yeah, this almost this act that I'm doing and my body motions and certain things that I do. So um, this is something I'm learning about myself in real time for everyone to see. <laughs> All the right. world's a stage and we are merely the actors. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is true. Amen, brother. What kind uh, of a, I want to do a Dennis Tardon question. What kind of a, what kind of a kid were you? What kind of, who were, who was your clique in high school? How would you describe yourself as like a 14 year old? You know, like where would we see 14 year old Mickey? What were you doing? Who, who were your people? What subjects did you like? You know, introduce us to, to, to Mickey Sharp as a kid. Sure. So I was pretty antisocial. I ended up dropping out of high school because of social anxiety. I didn't really have a click. Um, I spent most of my time hanging out by myself. Um, mm. I branched out much closer to adulthood. And um, so that introspectiveness definitely, I think um, helped me grow as an artist for sure. I was listening to a lot of music um, and painting a lot whenever I was 14. Wow, wow okay. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. You said you listened to a, a lot of instrumental music. Uh, can you give us a little uh, hint as to that what kind of music you were listening to? Was it more classical or uh, um, sound, soundtracks for movies? Or yeah, I mean that's uh, pretty much all of it. Um, I have a, <laughs> I have like I I have a, a small collection of like Kubrick soundtracks on vinyl. That's something that I hunt for. So I get a kick out of those. Which there are a lot of actual um, lyrical songs on those as well. But um, I mean, piano for sure, just anything. Electronic music is a big part of my life as well. All over the board. <laughs> I, I can see you listening to Danny Elfman. Uh, <laughs> definitely. That's, that's something that I, that, I, that I don't, that I can't talk about actually. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, check it out. Add that to wow. <laughs> <that's> my list. <laughs> Started out as in Oingo Boingo, and then he went on to do some, I, I mean, seriously iconic uh, movie soundtracks. Oh, okay. Like Pee Wee's Big Adventure, I'm... right? Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure was where he started. Yeah, yeah with, that was with, first with Tim Burton. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. funny. I actually listened to a podcast about uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and I didn't remember that detail. So, <laughs> <laughs> Which podcast wow. were you listening to? I guess you really to? liked it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh God! Here we go. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I don't even know. Like, where do what I? What are some of your favorite? Like, just like name a few. I'm always looking for like good ones. And I know yeah. JP over here. He listens to a lot of podcasts. Yes. Okay, yeah. So, um, last podcast on the left, which is horror based, is my jam. Oh, I've heard of that. Um, I listen to my brother, my brother and me, which is more of a comedy based podcast. I listen to. I listened to a podcast about Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> you got to talk to Troy Moore. I think he would like that. Well, yes. Are you going to do your own? Are you going to do your own podcast slash TV show? You you definitely could be a host, yes, right? You have that magnetism. I, 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 I really would love to, but that's, I, that's, I've been racking my brain for years about a subject that I feel like I would do well with. And that hasn't been too oversaturated already. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, once I figure that out, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 You'll Mickey, be really good what? at that. Mickey, what is some, somewhat a band or singer on your playlist that we might be surprised to see there? Like who's your guilty pleasure um, yeah, musically? Like Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> like, really cheesy pop music. I get super wow. down to <laughs> yeah. I feel like you are probably a reader and a writer. I mean, other books, like, do you do a lot of like literature stuff? Cause you seem like you're someone who might journal also, or do like some creative writing. Um, I definitely used to, uh, not so mm -hmm. much anymore. I have, I have like old journals and stuff and, um, poetry actually that I've been digging through recently inspired by you guys um I know that Whoa, and, and, really? yeah and there's, there's a lot cow. of poetry reading and stuff going on so I like I've actually just recently pulled out my old poetry notebook and I was like looking oh, through it and trying so to write sweet. more yeah well hopefully we'll see some performance of that on SDF soon yes I, I'm gonna try. It'll it'll be good whenever my voice is all messed up and I can't sing. <laughs> I just read. <laughs> how, I read how did you blow it out? Do you do you know when it happened? I mean, do you know the moment that it happened? Or 
No, it just, it happens all the time. I can always feel when it's going to happen. And I, I was like, bar- I was already barely there at the Ooh. show. And I was like, I just got to get through it. And during Rock Lob, we do a cover of Rock Lobster. And oh, I yeah. have to make all these crazy animal noises. So oh. that's always... <laughs> Here comes the narwhal. Woo, woo. Here yeah. we go. Like that, 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 here comes oh, a manta ray. ray. Yeah. Here comes a snake <laughs> ray. You're doing a nice Fred Schneider. You got to be oh, Fred does. Schneider. That, which, so, you know, I've got to see that because it's legendary. And I, ha- I haven't seen you do Rock Lobster, but that's going to be the next thing I do. Like tonight, I'm going to find that because everybody talks about that. <laughs> it is legendary. It so, good. <laughs> so where's some where are some of the places uh, that people can catch you on a regular basis? I know that you've got a couple of hangouts that really love you guys. Yeah. Jack um, Sure. Well, as far as like in-person places go, we're always at Jackrabbits. We have a bunch of shows coming up the rest of the year in Jacksonville at pretty much all of the clubs. There's a club called 1904 Music Hall. That's pretty much where I'm at. If I'm not performing, I'm there hanging out. And um, Justice Pub, just a bunch of other places. But as far as the virtual world goes, I'm, I'm, I try to be on here as much as I can. But people know where to find me. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, and, and again, I hope that you get lots of uh, gigs coming up in the near future. I know that things uh, kind of took a, a turn for the worse here in Florida. Uh, I'm also yeah. in Florida, Central Florida. Uh, so oh, awesome. Yeah. So I, I, I hope that uh, things work out for you and, and you stay safe out there. Thank you. And again, when you're on stage, you own it. I love watching you perform. Thank you so much. We love Mickey Sharp. Oh, and you yes, have all your fans came do. here. Make sure you go back over the comments because uh, everybody was like freaking out about how <laughs> awesome you are. <laughs> a like, lot of comments. A lot yeah. of comments. Oh. I couldn't even get them all up on the screen or whatever, mm. but go oh. back and look at it. Yeah, your people okay. came out, seriously. You're going to have oh, to go back sweet. and do a lot of hearts later. <laughs> oh, I yeah. will. Oh, yeah. No, I need that serotonin boost. I'm ready to go through that and feel all that with myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else has been going on with you lately? Uh, anything out of the ordinary? Uh... Um, besides trying to branch out and do some solo shows, that's pretty much what I have on my agenda lately as far as getting ready for that and practicing songs by myself and booking more solo gigs. That's that's the that's the step forward now. I've got to I've got to branch out from the ghouls and give them a break sometimes and do my own stuff. So that's well, that's what I'm and learning how to play this piano. That's what I'm focused on right now. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. After after looking at the at the the, the ghouls uh, logo and and talking to you about that, I really should have booked you in October. I realized. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but yeah. hey, there it is. Uh, again, well, we're giving them a taste before October gets here. <laughs> <laughs> September's here already, so get those Halloween things out. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on, and, and you're welcome to stay here and uh, watch Daniel Gay when he comes up. Absolutely. Um, he's going to perform with us, and uh, and again, if you have a question for him, you can uh, you can ask a question. We we enjoy right. our, when our when our first guest stays for the second half. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to pop over and on so I can get in the comments and blow it up. <laughs> okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you again awesome. so much. You're uh, let's go ahead and bring Daniel Gay on up. There he is. With hey, better lighting. <laughs> uh, Daniel <laughs> had a lighting problem before we got started, but he looks great now. Thank you. Yes. It's great to be here. Thank you guys for having me. We uh, we actually uh, talked to you earlier about getting on the show when we first started, and something went. I, I can't remember what it was. Something went awry, and we didn't get you on the early show. Uh, so I'm glad we finally did get you on. Um, I there are so many things about you that I, that I just really like, uh, oh, Daniel. Thank and you. Uh, and I remember when Likewise. I reached out to you, you're like, you, you were very humble. You're like, do you think I'm good enough to be on the show? <laughs> hey, man. And I was like, come on. <laughs> COVID is COVID has wrecked our egos and everything else, you know, so you never know, you never know. So it's worth, um, I'm really happy to be here. It's great, you know, getting to know so many people over this time, you know, through the social media, you know, because everything, it, it really has changed the world forever, I think, you know, and we're connected in a way we never have been. So it's great. You know, I'm in Worcester, Massachusetts. You're in Florida. Jonathan's in North Carolina. Renee's in New York. It's, it's incredible. 
Yeah. We're, yeah. we're all here together, you know. And we're all together. It's this big collaboration, right? Yeah. And I've met all these amazing people and all the diversity too. I mean, we had Mickey Sharp on here. Absolutely. Now we have Daniel I didn't Gick. realize she was in Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean that was a wonderful interview. I really enjoyed that and listening to Thank look you. forward to checking out the the Valley Ghouls. I love the uh the idea of the Rocky Rockabilly stuff. That sounds awesome. Oh yeah, and I want to see the rock lobster thing. Do you do rock yeah. lobster? I feel like you, <laughs> you could do a great. I would love to see you and Sid do a rock lobster. Oh yeah, yes. you know, um, you that'll have that will happen now that you said that, Renee. So. The challenge is out there, <laughs> the Daniel. Is the challenge oh, is. Oh boy. I Absolutely. challenge you in writing Daniel's set list before long. Yeah, I think <laughs> the B-52s are the next step of their musical education. So I think that's, yes. yeah, let's do exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a necessary part. I, I mean, really, yeah. it's a beautiful part of it. I just, I absolutely love it, you know. But you're an amazing musician. I mean, you, you know, Daniel, the thing is that we know when we get you, we get this true consummate professional. You are as musician-y as it gets. I mean, we, I mean, when we did part on tonight, we literally had this like flyer that had all this like music on it. We gave it to you and you, you played it and sent us a video that we played on air. It was like, the turnaround was like that. I mean, everyone like, has party tricks, you know, everyone has a party <laughs> trick. That one, that's How one. did yeah. you, were you one of those kids that like your mom was having you play piano when you were like two years old and all that? Uh, How did nope. you get started into the the you know that real musician-y thing? Like I can't read music anymore, you know. No. So for me, I'm very impressed. <laughs> for me, it was uh, neither of my parents are music. Were uh, my mom? My mom's passed away, but neither of my parents are musicians. But my house always had music in it. And my my earliest musical memories are definitely the Ramones. My dad is a huge Ramones fan. The Clash. <laughs> my musical education was that first first wave of punk rock. And oh, wow. then my parents got an old beat up piano, put it in the corner of the house and said, let's get some lessons. I never really cared. And then one day it just clicked. And after two or three years of taking lessons, I was like, you know, I really like this. I'm pretty good at it. And I stuck with it and I played through school, played in bands, got into rock bands in high school and really had a pretty cool musical experience. I'm from Burlington, Vermont. And I grew up there in the '90s, and there was a really active local music scene. Um, yeah. And I was I was part of that then, with you know the ska and punk bands and things. And I got to I, I got to do a lot of things when I was young, and then I kind of took a break from it for a while. And I'm 43 now, and here I am on social media on an interview. But uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and again, you play so many different instruments. You play the accordion, you play guitar, you play piano. I mean, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's others. Yeah, I I went to school for music. I um, after high school, music saved my life, like it did, I think, for a lot of people. Oh, uh, yes. I was a really shy kid. I grew up in a kind of a small place. I never really felt like I fit in a lot. I had some good friends, but I didn't like school. But I loved music. And I was always good at it. I did well enough in, in classes and I graduated. And I went to university for music and it was, you know, the best, the best thing I could have ever done. And, you know, I, I was challenged. Yeah, I was around great uh, people that, you know, everyone kind of raised each other's levels. And you're exposed to the whole world of music at, at a university. And you know, I went to the University of Massachusetts. And yeah, it, I really loved that experience. Okay, well, you said you would actually be able to perform for us uh, this evening, so we hope that uh, we're looking forward to a little mini concert from you. Yeah, um, I'd love to play a couple songs, sure. Uh, yeah. Yes, this this first one, I really, uh, I'm influenced a lot by Russian, Eastern European music and culture and also the art and architecture and stuff. And this is based on something like that. It doesn't really have a title. I'll see where it goes. Um, Thanks for being here. Thank you. 
something um, wow. based on some sort of Eastern European Soviet bygone era that I've created in my head. And that's, wow. <laughs> I love that, that stuff. I, I got a feeling like it had a kind of a silent film kind of feel to it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, I, felt think like, of, I felt like Buster Keaton was going to come busting <laughs> through the wall in a second. I think of any era, I'm a, his, <laughs> I'm a history teacher in school. Um, that's my job. And if, of any era I could live in, I think that would be it. I just think the 1920s, the 1910s, wow. I just think it was such a fascinating time. Musically, culturally, I just think what was happening is just incredible. You know, and that's that's probably where that would come from. I could play another piece for you now, kind okay. of along those those lines. This is not mine, but um, as a musician, I think I'm more influenced by a composer named Jan Tiersen than any other person in uh, that I can point to. And he's a French composer. He's written a lot for film. He's also, you know, made a lot of rock albums. But this is one of his pieces. It was featured in Amelie, a movie from you know the early 2000s. I know uh, it. And it's called uh, La Pre Midi. Beautiful piece. That's beautiful. That's just beautiful. <laughs> Took some liberties with it, but uh, that's basically the piece. And he's just totally worth checking out. He has a new record that's just absolutely fantastic. Um, he's touring in the United States. I know this isn't a show to promote Jan Tiersen, but he's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to just say he's worth, he's worth every second of your time. Your interview is whatever you want it to be. Uh, yeah, awesome. That's what, that's what my, yeah, my guideline worth, is for the show. He's worth the ticket price. But uh, Amelie is a wonderful movie. I remember. I remember it well. It's a love story, and uh, she was adorable. The one, the girl that was the, the lead oh, in that, and yeah. uh, it was an Academy Award uh, winner too, I believe. Yeah, wonderful. All of all of their movies. The um, uh, the the man that made it. I can't even think of his name. But City of Lost Children, Amelie. There's so many great French films, and he's just Jean. I didn't know Genet. he did City of Jean Lost Genet. Children. Yeah, that's so. Oh, just such great storytelling. Yeah, I'm definitely influenced by that stuff as a musician. So as, different as well. too. Definitely, yeah, very different. That one had Ron Perlman in it. Yeah, as a strong <laughs> as a strong man. Yeah, he was, yeah, it was fantastic. He was so out of place, but it was so and, perfect. And he spoke French. Yeah, it was it was great. Absolutely. <laughs> and, okay, I don't want to slow you down anymore. Go ahead and play another one uh, that you want. That you sure. Uh, yeah. Um, this one, uh, I play I play in a band in Worcester, and I also play solo around central Massachusetts and whoever will have me. <laughs> and I've written some songs. I hope to record them this fall, uh, this fall or winter. And this is one of them. This is a song about my kids called Stations of the Cross. Not a religious song at all, but has a religious title. And I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank 
plan to move far away from my station of the cross from the games I chose to play before all is lost before the dying day is consumed by the cost of all the greed and hate Choice has not been made. True style over substance or love over hate. Where we go from here in the sacrificial game will tell us if it's likely that we'll die without the pain. Over on the sidelines, the kids wait for their turn. Care so much it burns. Will the kids be chosen or will they freeze with fear? The teachers who won't teach them the lessons they must hear. Everyone's an island, but an island with a bridge. To an open field of poppies, choose to die or choose to live your chance to be counted or your chance to be removed from your station of the cross you may win or you may lose well, it's called station of the cross wow and that's uh, and that's, that's an original? original yep that's an original one uh I got a bunch of them, mostly on the guitar. I don't have my guitar stuff set up, so I'm going to stick with the piano tonight. Maybe if you ever want to have me again, I'll do it on some of the guitar. I was going to ask you if you were going to do uh, the accordion or the guitar tonight as well, but okay, stick with I'll the stick, piano. Got it. Yeah, I'll stick with the piano tonight, but uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's all here. My kids, I have three, three kids all trying to, this is the first week of school. They're they're still downstairs trying to unwind, so it's like I'm trying to the accordion might actually wind them up so much <laughs> they won't you know it has that effect on people. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave that one away. That's a morning or afternoon type of instrument. I'm gonna have to ask Ivan Basil about that. I, okay. <laughs> he's another accordion player. This is the Ivan Basil show today. I've mentioned him like 400 times. <laughs> I didn't realize there's another it's accordion, a small world. Another accordion player. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, he does a lot of S SDF. Nice. Um, I I was gonna talk to you about that. Uh, I, I noticed on your on your web page. Yep. Uh, that basically you are the world's greatest dad. Uh, one of the world's uh, greatest dads. Facebook um, is great at illusions. You know, <laughs> Facebook is the ultimate lie machine. You are but so yes. humble. I mean, I am the world's greatest dad, obviously, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I, well, so humble. I'm proud of my kids. Uh, I try. We have a we have a good time. <laughs> well, um, did everything change for you when you had kids? You know, I don't remember life before I had kids. Really, I don't That's remember. I don't remember it clearly, or I remember it through a totally different lens. I think the day that I had kids, it was just. It stopped being about me and, you know, as much as I like to be narcissistic and, you know, selfish and I want those things, it's just, you're, you're not anymore, you know, and it's exact same situation for me. It's, it's the best thing in the world, but you're never going back, you know, and <laughs> it's like that. And I totally support the choice not to, you yeah. know, and, and it's, and it's because, okay. yeah, and it's totally okay. And because honestly, like I said, you can't go back. <laughs> and that's there's no return policy, you know. It's but just, it changes, it changes, and you're happy for it, uh, you know. Yeah. Like you said, you know, it's it, there's, it, there's no regrets. Yeah, you're rich. You're a richer person, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Agreed. But you lose you lose a piece of yourself, and you gain a, a lot of pieces of other people. <laughs> I think in my case, I lost a lot of what was bad about me. That's the best case scenario. That's a great thing. So, you know, it chipped away some of the pieces that were still keeping yeah. me back, you know, yeah. 
uh, as a person. Um, that's that's awesome. Uh, I already know the answer to this next question, but I'm asking it for our viewers. Um, sure. <laughs> do you encourage your kids to do music? No. Um, my, my oldest kid, Sid, uh, they were just drawn to it. You know, it was just something they, they were naturally had a, had a voice, um, that I, you know, wasn't provided by either myself or my wife. It was just always liked to sing and it just kept going from there. And now all the, all their interests and all the things that they're finding is just, it's awesome. You know, it reminds me of myself when I was their age, but even even cooler <laughs> so you do encourage it you just didn't push it on them and that no that, not yeah. them and then the other i have two others who are twins a boy and a girl mirabelle mm -hmm. and jarvis and they're right below me right down there um they i are, can hear them <laughs> they're totally different my son loves baseball he's a he's a great baseball player and mirabelle my his, his sister loves school they're all totally different they have their own things and it's it's cool well that's great and i have an awesome wife who keeps it all together <laughs> so the glue yeah. that holds it all together everything's working out so far Wonderful. but again Wonderful. this is facebook so it all might be a lie right <laughs> <laughs> and on that happy note let's play another song if all you right can. um this is a traditional tune it's actually i learned it from the alan lomax songbook and which if you're a musician i highly recommend having just in your library it's just a great historical book plus okay, one more so time much. andy lomax Alan Lomax. Alan Lomax. Yeah, Alan Lomax, Lomax with an X at the end. Lomax. Okay. Yep. And it's Song just, book. he compiled hundreds of folk songs from the 1850s all the way through. And this is one of them. This is an old outlaw tune called Jesse James. basically the idea of that tune i think there's 30 verses or something and if you read the whole thing you'll get who jesse james was it's totally totally worth your time so i i definitely got a, a saloon hall feel about that yeah yeah that's a bar room that's bar room all the way yep um matt matt uh, is asking how did you stumble upon upon this this song sounds great oh thank you so much uh I was low max. Uh, oh, I think <laughs> I've always been really interested in folk music from all over the world. And I always avoided American folk music. For some reason, I, I was more interested in, you know, learning different European styles, studying different kinds of things from over there. Mm -hmm. Then one day, a friend of mine turned me on to this Alan Lomax stuff. And I read it. And it's just this big book. It's just this, you know, get a soft cover book. There's hundreds of songs, and the coolest thing about it is it's it's compiled. There's no author, so all of this stuff is right. just oral tradition stuff, and these songs are just absolutely incredible. And so many of them are part of the American Songbook. Jesse James isn't really there, but you know Bruce Springsteen's covered this. The Pogues. There's so many versions of this song, and it all comes from Alan Lomax, 
who's not a musician. He's a historian. And he, and he did all the work for you. He put it all he together. He did the work. And, yeah. And if you're a fan of anything from Nick Cave to Billy Bragg, it doesn't matter like what your interests are. They all get in. They're influenced by this stuff. And it's totally worth your time. Uh, yeah. And and that's that's kind of where I learned Jesse James. I've always loved Westerns. I love Ennio Morricone. I love the, that style of music, mm -hmm. um, the cinematic stuff. Uh, if Mickey Sharp is listening, that's another good one. Ennio Morricone. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Ange Angelo Badalamenti. <laughs> and there's some just... You know, I was more into... Um, oh, my gosh. Who was the one from Citizen Kane and Taxi Driver? Oh, uh, oh. yeah. It's killing oh. me that I can't remember this name now. He's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's so much great It'll soundtrack. It'll come to me. So the soundtrack guys are as much of an uh, Herman Bernard Herman. Oh, Bernard Herman, and Bernard he did Herman. some Twilight Twilight Zone stuff too. He's oh. yeah, he's so great. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um. Uh. Corey Lynn is watching, and oh. I always love it when Corey Lynn is watching. She's, yeah, she's wondering it. if you're a teacher, what age group are you teaching? This is an Cor interesting question. Corey, I'm a huge fan. Um, I know you're in Virginia. I love your music. I'd love to do a show with you sometime, but who knows if that'll ever happen. But I'm an ESL. Uh, I teach English as a second language in history. And I teach at a school in Worcester, Massachusetts that's made up of uh, newcomers and refugees. And my age group is 18 to 22 year olds. And it's the greatest job in the world. Love it. I used to teach ESL in China. Yeah. Except I my remember group was a lot younger. To you talking to you about that yeah that's that's yes same similar job yep uh, and she's saying she would love to do a concert with you as well yeah that's yeah awesome we'll make it make so, it happen i, I, I got a feeling we got a reunion another reunion coming up <laughs> go ahead and play us another song if you can all right um and i know you can all right this one this one's uh this is a cover but it's by a band called codeine uh it's it's called the new year but this is a new school year and it feels like a fresh start. So I feel like it's apropos in a way. So this song's called The New Year. Uh, it was actually, just to get this right, I don't wanna, it, Codeine is how I know it. It was written by a band called Seam from Cincinnati who were awesome as well. But anyway, I know the Codeine version. This is sort of based on that. Okay. Um, 
also if, i don't know if anyone knows uh i want to give one more plug to the great chris brokaw of codeine of the band come he's a boston musician i'm a huge fan he doesn't know me but i just want to say he knows i've covered this song and uh he's fantastic he has a record that came out last year that's just incredible that's worth checking out also uh and if he's ever in your neck of the woods check out chris brokaw he's an, he's a awesome awesome musician great show brokaw like tom bro like tom brokaw brokaw <laughs> yes that's all, that's the only impression i can do of him is just him saying his own name tom brokaw by the by the way <laughs> your impressions are incredible oh, i mean thank you yes like i watched a bunch of stuff on youtube that you had done from stand-up stuff earlier and earlier <laughs> in life <laughs> i loved it I, I have a lot of fun on Thursday nights when we do Impersonation Nation on Clubhouse. And oh, cool. I always throw in something out of left field to keep them on their toes. Oh, like awesome. like I did Granny from the, the Beverly Hillbillies. You're like, <laughs> yeah, you get out of my kitchen now. <laughs> Just keep on Love their it. toes. Yeah, I could listen all day, man. That's awesome. <laughs> um, you said uh, everybody's got party tricks. and People give you requests and you just kind of bang stuff out and Am I right? Yeah, I mean, if if I if I so if I was it, to say, can you do a little Danny Elfman for me right now? Can you do a little Beetlejuice? You might be able to bang out a few too, a few few bars of that. Uh, um, I don't think I can. I need it. I, I, I need stumped it, you. I need it in my head. Like I need <laughs> like I need something. If I had a computer here, I could do it. <laughs> but it's my The only sound I could do this sound. Here's some John Williams for you. <laughs> there you go. The Jaws theme. That's all. Hey, yeah, we're talking about Shargon for yeah, a I'm, I'm in Massachusetts. I had to do that. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, we got time for one more short song if you want to do it. Sure. All right. Okay, great. All right, let's see. This is uh, another style of music I like. I guess it kind of fits into that barroom thing. It's a, it's a little more boogie-woogie, I guess. I actually don't know where this is going to go, but really appreciate everyone listening tonight. My name's Daniel Gay. Thank you, Rory. Thank you, um, It's Casual. Thank you, Jonathan, Renee, Mickey. Everything was great. I really appreciate it, guys. Awesome. Awesome. So if you're in the Midwest and you've got a little independent film that you're making, this guy can do your soundtrack for hey, you. All the right. Weirder, the weirder, He'll cut the you better. a big deal. You know, Charlie Chaplin meets John Carpenter. We'll do some, we'll meet somewhere in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Carpenter did all of his own soundtracks. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. He's another one. <laughs> and uh, Kim Ware is here and Tom Cheshire is here. Oh, awesome. Just wanted to give a shout out to them as well. Of course, Corey Lynn said, I'm just so enamored with the way Daniel plays. It's like a feeling all the way. Oh, uh, I mean, so many like, big superstars likewise. here and Daniel is one. And we're just, mm -hmm. Daniel, you are always, always always the perfect you were an impeccable guest you're an impeccable oh, performer so it's just such a joy to share the stage with you anytime we can do it you Love have an you open Indeed. invitation to thank anything you, that's hard on me thank you, thank you. we're definitely thank gonna you, have to Mickey, go thank you soon. thank you everybody uh -huh. it was a wonderful night thank you guys yes yes and mickey so, sharp real quick here. oh yes. yeah and i saw kim where she she liked my tom broke impression Oh. Broca. No, I'm kidding. She was talking about the other. Broca. I like it too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have a YouTube channel, am I right? Yeah, you can go to Daniel Gay Music YouTube. Uh, also, I have it as the Daniel Gay Cacophony <laughs> on Facebook. Mm. You can find me there. Um, if you're in Massachusetts, I've been playing some shows around there. Um, otherwise, I'll do, I'll see you online. You can follow me on YouTube and 
Yeah. And thank you, please thank you. give our love to your kids, Sid. They are will, amazing. Yes. They are a superstar. Oh, they, dare I say, they are even a bigger superstar than you are, Daniel. Like, oh, yeah. I know. That. Like, if we had more time, they would have been here. But hey, that's Sid's and all. dad. <laughs> it's cool and all. <laughs> That's what happened in China. I be, I became the the guy in the back seat, and my daughter was the was the big star. Yeah, that's, oh, that's it. Tina's dad. <laughs> yeah, it's better. I You're don't like Sid's dad. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Thank I want to thank Mickey Sharp again. Thank y'all. Uh, hope you can catch her in the near future in Jacksonville. And again, Daniel. Yeah, we got to get you back on again soon. You're a awesome. great guy. Thank, thank you, you guys. so much. Appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you, Renee and Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you, Rory. Love y'all. And everybody have Thank a good you. night. Thank you, Rory Panlin.